peace to the family. We alive, Miami, baby. We out in Miami. Beautiful start of the day. How can we complain? Why would we complain? Peace. So I want to make it clear. You know I'm coming out of retirement. I know many of you have seen the flyer. I'm very excited about the situation. I'm super excited. We're going to do it in July. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do this in July. And the reason why it's a great opportunity spiritually is because we're going to do this in the church. We're going to do this event in the black church. We never see the black church really stand up and say, I'm going to debate you on the issues. The elephants in the room. Elephants. You don't see it, let alone for them to have the heart, for them to have the courage to say, and we're going to do it in our forum. When given the opportunity to do this debate at a mega church in Brooklyn that hosts thousands of people, I had to say yes. Because if I can get the opportunity to have my Christian brethren, my Christian brothers and sisters, sit down and watch a presentation, sit down and listen to a diatribe, I know that not only within the confines of those walls inside that church, I also know outside that church, members of the church is going to watch that. They're going to say, this high school dropout is debating one of our top <laughs> clergy? Because Pastor Damon Richardson, Christian apologist, he's considered to be one of their greatest minds. <clears throat> and I'm not going to lie to you. The man is exceptionally learnt. He's very brilliant, very articulate, <clears throat> very calculative in his Christian deliberations, very calculative in his arguments. They're well put together. He's highly educated. And as an apologist, he's designed to take the most common arguments that Christians are confronted with and to give answers, to diffuse the potentiality of people finding Christians in error. So I think it's exciting. I think it's very exciting that this opportunity would present itself and that I would be able to do it in Brooklyn. So it's kind of like the Lakers versus the Clippers where they occupy the same stadium, but they have home and away games, even though they're both from the same city. They represent the same city. So in the same manner, I'm from Brooklyn, but it's going to be an away game because I'm going to be at the church. I'm going to be on their home court. I think this is a great I know this to be a great opportunity for us to reach the Christian church. I want y'all to be there in representation of our community. And I also want to tell you guys, if I don't show you a black woman on a cross, on an unk, if I don't show you Christians, early Christians, who had the black woman on an unk, if I don't factually prove this, <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying, I'll, I'll mess around and I won't even teach again. If I don't show you this, because I went to the other side of the world, and excavated for that information. I got video and I got picture proof. But I mean, that's not the whole essence of the debate, but I just want to let you guys know the type of information that I'm going to be revealing because I've been waiting for the greatest opportunity because my good brothers in the community never challenged me to the extent where I was ready to push and take it to another level. When I went, what happens is I have folders put together that in the event someone says something that I find to take us to another level or if they say something that I'm like man I didn't know you was going to go there boom I go in that folder I put it in my presentation by the time I go up there and talk my talk I'm already available for that argument and so because dealing with the brothers they like ambush scholarship they don't want to tell you what they're going to talk about they don't want to tell you the books that they're really bringing in so you got to kind of sit there on the fly and freestyle and I, I mastered that ambush scholarship. This is going to be more organized, but we are going to have ambush scholarship rounds. That's what I'm going to call them, where we do our PowerPoint presentations to demonstrate our arguments. We're going to have those rounds. But uh, when we decided if we was going to do public policy or Lincoln-Douglas, I agreed to doing a Lincoln-Douglas style debate. So these are different type of debate styles. 
take time to do some research on it, y'all. It's gonna be a this is gonna be a highly educational debate, and I, my goal and intention amongst many is to make sure that it can be reviewed in other halls or other institutions of education. I would like it to be reviewed. I would like people in college to say, "Man, this debate right here was very powerful." So the beauty about what I do is that I promote literacy in such a way that I know how to pack a building discussing historical, political, or health issues, whatever the case may be. That's the beauty about what I do. And so having a theological debate within the confines of the church means a lot to me because it feels like undoubtedly I'll be able to wake up a lot of people, not just in the church, but the people that's going to watch it thereafter just because of the fact that it's inside of a church and not just any church. It's going to be a mega church. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> the church is going to be well represented. I need y'all to make sure y'all come through in person, represent, but if you can't be there in spirit virtually, be there virtually. You feel what I'm saying? But what also makes me excited to do this event is because I'm going to take a great deal of the proceeds and open up a bookstore two weeks from the time of the actual debate in Brooklyn. It's going to be a barbershop slash bookstore. <clears throat> or I might open up a barbershop and open up a bookstore. It depends how the bag look. You know, we good. I employ a lot of my people. The bookstore alone, I should be able to employ between eight to ten people because there's a diversity of things that's going to take place because I got my own publishing company. So I'll enact... I'll, I'll make sure the publishing company can thrive out of that bookstore. So my books can be published there and other people's books because I got my own publishing company. So that's one. But the bookstore itself, then we're going to have open mic, spoken word. I just want to create an outlet for the community right in the hood, man. Now, them brothers in the community, they're good people. You know, good people from Brownsville to East New York in the Nine Outs. That's where I live. I'm more likely at wrecking the store in the 90s, though. But I know my brothers from the village is going to walk right there because where I grew up at is right on the cusp of Crown Heights, East New York, and Brownsville. If you sneeze in one direction, you wind up in the other spot. So I live right there on the cusp. If you go behind 98th Street, you wind up in Brownsville. You come past 98th Street, you're in East New York, going down Rutland Road, 93rd, 94th Street, and all that. You go up the hill from Lincoln Terrace Park, you go up the hill, you wind up in Crown Heights all of a sudden. <clears throat> You walk up the hill, you in Crown Heights. So it's interesting. So I can marry those three communities and do something extremely positive. And of course, I'm going to make sure we employ at least one of the members of the cuz. Mookie, got to do that. More Moolah. You know what I'm saying? CIP Moolah. But we're going to do this in honor of your legacy as well. Any good that we bring into the community, we're going to attach to your name, my good brother. We miss you. It's going to be dope. <coughs> it's going to be dope. It's going to be super dope. But, you know, I'm, I just had to get up. I'm excited. Pastor Damon Richardson, Christian apologist. He's highly intellectual. He's definitely going to come in on a collegiate level. And the church has appointed him to task assigned them to task and they feel he's one of their most brilliant minds they feel he's one of their most brilliant minds and I think that's that speaks a lot to his character and to his knowledge and so I'm excited about it he's going to present a debate style and a level of knowledge that a lot of the brothers and sisters that I, brothers that I used to debate against didn't have or wasn't equipped with you know, he's going to spend more time on the subject matter rather than attempting to call me names and curse at me because <laughs> they frustrated. <laughs> so it's going to be powerful because, you know, they ain't going to do all that vulgarity and, and use all that profanity in the church. You know, they're not doing that. So, you know, you're going to get a respectable debate. And, you know, I know how to speak without doing that and still turn all the way up. Because, man, you know, I'm going to be all the way up. I'm coming in. You know how I give it up. It's But, yo, the stuff I'm going to present. Woo! The stuff I'm going to present. Oh my goodness, man. I got stuff for days and I'm still challenging myself. But the things that I'm going to present, it's going to shake the foundation of Christianity. I promise you I'm going to convert people out of that. I promise. I don't know what they're thinking, but it's okay. I want them to continue thinking what they're thinking so they don't 
tap out. But when I go into church and I put this thing down, oh my goodness. When I go into church and I put this thing together, <clears throat> it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. And we're going to be able to wake up a lot of people. We're going to be able to wake up a lot of people. And it's great. We're going to hear both sides, put it together. But to be in the church, man, uh, and of this capacity, a church that has such a large audience, such a large occupancy, to be able to bring that into the community that is always heavily influenced by the church. So we could finally give them a piece of our mind intellectually. I'm not going to waste no time playing no games in there because I'm going to speak on behalf of all of you guys, our frustrations, but I'm going to vent them intellectually. And I'm going to take it to a level that you've never seen it before because I got some information that if you can watch this, if you bear witness to what I put on that PowerPoint and you still decide to be Christian, that's okay with me. But one thing I know for sure, I'm going to wake a lot of people up in that building. I know I'm not only going to wake a lot of people up in that building. I know that the, the conversation, what I postulate, I know what I put forth before the world is going to have to be heavily reviewed. Because some of the secrets, the cat is going to be out the damn bag. And a lot of people are going to have to answer for the type of stuff that I post. A lot of people are going to have to answer for the work that I publish because you know I'm going to release a book. I always release a book, at least a book, but I'm going to release two books that day. One is going to be on the actual debate subject matter, the historicity of Jesus, and another book is going to be on polygyny. I'm going to release a book on polygyny and the historicity of Jesus. Okay, it's going to be intense. It's going to be very intense. <laughs> Yeah, so ticket sales is going to be up there. Ticket sales going to go up. We have a huge opportunity because, like I said, I'm going to open up a barbershop and bookstore straight after the event, which means I'm already in talks about finding the location now. So when I rent out that storefront, they understand I need about a week and a half to two weeks to get things right before they put me on the clock and charge me month-to-month -month rent. So in that, we're going to create a nice hub. And I want everybody to know, if you have your own products, it's more than welcome in our community. Send it through. We sell them off, off commissions, and we'll put it on the site as well. And there'll be no limit to it. We're going to have people just dedicate themselves to mail. That's going to be what they employ to. Then, like I said, I got my publishing company. That's another element. Then it's the people that run the store immediately itself. <laughs> okay? Then it's the people that is dealing with the barbershop. You see, so... And then the chairs that's being rented out. So like I said, by the time I'm done, I should have about eight to ten people we can employ. We create a flagship and then we'll be able to redo this store. Same working model elsewhere. That's going to be the goal. So out of this debate, we're going to employ our people. And it won't be exclusive to the people in Brooklyn. But I want to create a situation that the upcoming designers, so it ain't tacky. That's why I need a big location. Hopefully I can get something around 2,000 square feet minimum. But I need a nice size location so we can have the spoken word, so we can have the open mic. So then I can have promoters involved. And so we can hear people do their thing. Oh, they want to do up and coming rap battles. That's, a, that's where it started with Smack DVD and the Lion's Den and everybody like that. And Loaded is doing this thing. Yo, you got to remember, <clears throat> we got to go back to the grassroots. Anything that we can do to help encourage our brothers and sisters to stay motivated and ambitious so if you are an upcoming designer and you're making your own shoes or your own dresses or your own pants and shirts and you need a place that you can sell it out of so you can proudly tell somebody oh they sell my clothes in such and such store because trust me if i'm driving around in rolls royce which i am <clears throat> if i'm if i'm porari light or lambo po i'm gonna treat the store like that you feel what i'm saying and you know my good brothers that support me and my good sisters in the sports music entertainment industry, you already know. Not only do I got their co-sign, they're going to patronize. They're going to come and they're going to support. So hopefully your products is in the store. And when your products is in the store, hopefully they take to it, buy it, like it. Who knows where it goes from there? Can't make you no promises, but it'd be a beautiful thing if somebody 
of of celebrity caliber is holding your product. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, that's gonna be the mandatory. All my mans and them that I rock with in the celebrity world, when they come to the store, they gotta take some pics with people's products in their hand. And just show that love. And show that love. That's how we doing that. It's gonna be a powerful thing. It's gonna be powerful. You know. But I, I always wanted to wait until I was in position to do these type of things. I never wanted to do it prematurely. I wanted to make sure my family is right, the bread is right, because I want to make sure that the store doesn't have to rely on its own success to stay open. I wanted to make sure that my status has grown so much that the Brother Polite brand in itself would be able to maintain the store so no matter what, the store remains open because I need it to be a safe hub. I need the store to be something that the youth could go to that I wish I had to keep me locked in. You, know, you like to rap, you like to do all that. Look, let's see if you got a heart and do your spoken word on Fridays and Saturdays. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? If you got heart, you know, that's that's the type of vibe. Oh, you say you got it like that, young man? We, well, we gonna hear you out. We ain't gonna just have you have talent and walk up and down, back and forth to school. You could demonstrate that talent right where we at. That's the vibe, not them all. That's what we need, <clears throat> you feel me? And then, like I said, it doesn't matter what city or state you're from. If you're creating products, damn it, if you ain't got a product, if you ain't got a product, create it. Because we're going to make space to solicit it. Even if it gets to the point we have to show one of each product just to make space in store because so many of y'all are producing something. We want to sell it and give you your commissions. And when we online, come on, online is where it's at. But because I'm more popular than you are, reality speaking, then you can leverage my popularity and get your product exposure that you need. And when, let the people decide if they like your product more than someone else's. That's all about your demonstration. That's all about how you package it. You feel what I'm saying? So that's that's what y'all got to do. We'll start working on that now. Because when that store open, I would like to already have you guys <clears throat> products in the store. When that store opens, I already like to be so loaded with our brothers and sisters' products. Because like I said, the goal is to make sure that the store can sustain itself without the revenue of the store. And I'm on that level right now. So I'm not worried about it. Because, you know, when you're done with New York, it's three months security, one month rent. So if the storefront is $3,000, I got to have 12 bands. And then they still be wanting a security fee. New York be banging you in the head. This ain't like when you're in the South or other places you can get you a storefront for five, $600 a month and all that other crazy stuff. I went out of town before. I said, what the hell? But, you know, that's how it is when you're in the, in the, in the city slash the hood. And they gentrifying the area as well. <clears throat> Man, but it's all good. And I got another store idea that I'm going to bring to the table, but I got to get the first one or two of them off because I'm going to keep building them next to each other and around them. And I'm going to turn my brothers and sisters into store owners because I'm not going to own the whole store outright. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create industrialists in my community, and I'm going to empower my young brothers and sisters to become business owners in the hood. I'm making them business owners. I'm not playing no games. I'm gonna force people to action. So my good brothers, you know, salute to all y'all. You gotta surround yourself around positive energy. That's what's gonna be your salvation. You keep indulging in that gang behavior, that's the type of energy you're gonna be magnetized to. You guys gotta protect this place and show people that you are great. And I talk to my brothers in them. And the fact that they be listening to me, watching the videos, I was so elated at the fact that my brothers actually be listening to me and hearing me out. So every time I go back to New York, I'm building with them about this. And everybody's for it. <clears throat> Everybody wants something positive. So, you know, last time I did an event out there, and shout out to the cuz, Big Bad Bolo. Last time I did an event out there, and I was like, yo, I'm going to erect a store out here, but y'all got to take care of it. We had some initiatives. But, you know, no emails, no calls, but we ain't organized that the way we supposed to. And I know what I got to do because I'm an organizer. So I'm not about to sit here and use it as an excuse. Oh, man, because I say, you know what? The people ain't used to organizing. The people ain't used to putting something together for their own community, erecting their own storefront and collecting names and numbers. So I thought about it. I said, I'm going to just do the damn thing. <laughs> I'm going to do everything it takes, set up the dang store. And I'm going to show, and I'm going to put people in position, show them how to organize and do this thing right. So, you know, we back up officially, New Covenant. We're going to get all this right, and we're going to put it together, 
you know, so I'm asking my members of New Covenant, all states abroad, you show up for this event. <laughs> it's a demand. <laughs> we need you to show up for this event, help us build the store, because we're doing it with our own hands. I ain't paying no extra help outside. But we're gonna we're gonna make this store our signature store. You know, like when I went to Chicago and I set up a store out there. When I was in my bookstore vibe and I opened up, when I opened up, I opened up, uh I had four bookstores at one point. One was in Philly and three was in New York. One was in Philly and three was in New York. And then I even opened up a restaurant, Avalon Alkaline in Bed Stuy. <clears throat> and everything in my store was made by hand. Soap, lotion, deodorant, hair, grease, body spray, pampers, made those myself by hand and my family and children. I taught them how to do it. Even their own uh, incense, taking the gum Arabic, the sawdust, rubbing it in there, putting it in the oven, baking it with the, with the oils, cutting the oil a little with a little DPG to stretch it out to make more, more, more money for my buck. Yo, I do this. Entrepreneurship, I do this. Well, I'm more into the industrial aspect. I'm an industrialist at this level. But like I said, I just wanted to create something around myself where the circumstances would permit me to do the things I want to do without any hindrance. As I'm telling you, I wanted to, I didn't want to move prematurely. I wanted to make sure that I don't have to rely solely on the store success for the store to be successful. <clears throat> Real talk. Real talk. Make sure y'all share this video. You won't be able to share all my Facebook stuff, but what you are able to share is the live streams. So whenever we go live, now you can share those. So share this. I want everybody to be part of this event. Because, you know, a Negro said on Instagram, oh, you just promoting so you could make pay-per-view sales. You damn right. Because the storefront got to look like the Rolls Royce I drive. <laughs> you feel me? When I'm in, I'm in Miami right now. When I'm in Beverly Hills and I'm pushing them things... You know, storefront got to look like that. I can't be moving around in a Rolls Royce or the classic Bentley, the 55 Bent that I got. I can't be moving around like that. And then when you come to the storefront in the hood, it look like shit. Nah, that, my joint got to have a glow. It got to have a glow where you, yo, we know it. I want it to be that place that when you come to Brooklyn, you got to go over there and stop by. You got to check in. You ain't doing nothing unless you go to the Brother Polite spot over there, the I Am Brother Polite headquarters, whatever we want to call that. We're going to figure it out. New Covenant, whatever we want to call it. The point, in, the point of the matter is, it needs to be a hub where our children can be safe, where we promote literacy. The reason why I'm talking about the barbershop slash bookstore and or the way I want to really do it, I want to get two stores next to each other and one spot be the barbershop, the other spot be the bookstore, which you could walk through from one to the other. So that way, if we do an event, we got enough space to in-house a good amount of people for our brothers and sisters to do the spoken word and everything like that. So obviously I'll, I'll need over 2,000 square feet, but I'm gonna work with whatever we get. But it gotta be done, so I'm not gonna make no excuses. So even if we can't get what we ideally want, we are gonna take a spot, cause I ain't got no time to play games. I don't wanna make no excuses. I wanna make sure it's there. So I actually got my people walking around taking down the numbers for these storefronts. Then they gotta send me videos and pictures when they get the walkthroughs so I could approve. I gotta find out the square feet. I already understand the walking traffic and the driving traffic. I already understand the demographic because I know exactly where I wanna place the store idealistically. I need it right in the 90s <clears throat> in East New York. I need it right there. I need it right there where I went to school. Walter Weaver, 398 Elementary School in Rutland Plaza. I need it right there. Not too far from 391 Mahalia Jackson, where I went to junior high. Not too far from George Wingate High School. Go, walking down Rutland Road. Then you wind up by Albany Projects. I need, I need it right there in that matrix. <laughs> you feel me? Right there. <clears throat> Real talk. Real talk. You know, that's why I need it. You're right there in the, in the where I come from. But it's not going to be limited. The people that will be the benefactors, the benefactors of this movement, it's not going to be exclusive to people in Brooklyn. Just understand I'm initiating a process in Brooklyn. is only right because I'm from Brooklyn. I'm excited to do this. 
I've been wanting to do this for a while and I've been wanting to talk about it, but I don't like to talk about something unless I'm actually hands-on and initiating the process because I don't want to turn around, talk something up, and then people are like, yo, where's it at, though? Where's it at? How come it ain't happened yet? I don't like that. If I say I'm about to do something, I'm going to do it. Anytime I ever said I was going to erect a store, people know me. They know I do it, and I did it. <clears throat> but this is the state because now I can handle me traveling all over the world and doing everything. I got a large enough uh, support group. I got a new covenant community. I got members, and I got a tremendous amount of support where I'm from in Brooklyn. Tremendous. From Brownsville to East New York to Crown Heights to Bed-Stuy to Canarsie. I get a lot of love. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? I get a lot of love in Brooklyn, man. Fort Greene, I get a lot of love. Trust me when I tell you. My homies and them in, at Brevoit, trust me when I tell you. So it's, it's like, in many respects, I'm the golden child because I'm able to go to different communities where other people ain't able to go to certain communities on the strength of what I teach and the fact that I'm from Brooklyn. I know a lot of things change, but we gotta promote healing, man. That's what's gonna change it. And so we've organized to be disorganized and bang on each other. We're gonna organize to remain organized and heal each other. <laughs> That's gonna be the goal. <clears throat> well, you know, you guys, ain't got, you know, you know I, I know I know there's a risk in putting stuff like this together. You know, all we could do is prepare for the worst and be ambitious to do our best. That's all we do. But you know when I come through, I'm it's the military. You know when I'm on my time, I'm always I got my vest on, I got my hitters with me, legal firearms. You know I don't play games. <clears throat> Cause one of the members of New Covenant is the one that's providing all the damn firearms and bulletproof vests and everything like that. Security detail and all of that. So when I come through, that's why my shit be so locked in and legit. <laughs> you know, I'm coming in with the goddamn military when I come in. You know, I'm coming 40, 50 people deep. <clears throat> that's just my security. You know how I do. I don't, you ain't never catching me slipping. <laughs> you never. Ain't nobody ever catching me slipping. I can't get caught slipping where I'm from. I, especially where I'm from. I got a responsibility to make sure. I'll never get caught slipping. I never get caught slipping. Stay with firearms on me. I just don't. I just don't represent myself like that because I. I don't want to carry the energy, or or create a a type of instigating energy. But wherever I go, my security locked in. I always got a vehicle behind me wherever I go. It's just what it is. But I don't carry myself. Hey, I want you to check my security. You know, sometimes, sometimes I. <clears throat> I let it do what it do. And I show you I'm on that type of time. Sometimes I do that. But that ain't what it's about. That's just part of the game. And I wish the game wasn't part. I wish it wasn't part of the game. But it is. I wish it wasn't part. But it is. You feel me? So what I'm going to do? But what I ain't going to do is get caught out there like Malcolm and Martin. Motherfucker say, get your hands out of my pocket. <laughs> Yo, he better be prepared to duck. Because my hitters ain't playing. I got legal hitters. That's part of my community. That's that's with this movement. So it ain't like somebody who's just hired to be armed security. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? All my hitters is part. Because I made sure the members of New Covenant got weapons and firearms training. So the people that's protecting me are people that really rock with me. You feel what I'm saying? I make sure the people that's protecting me are people who really understand my vision. My goals, my mission, that's the kind of mindset I got. I don't play games. And like I said, I don't do things prematurely or to the beat of other people's hearts. So when they say, you need to do this, you need to do that, I know what I need to do. You need to do it if it means that much to you. I know what I got to do. Facts. You know, it's early. I'm excited. You know, and let's make this the flagship so we can set it up in other spots because I'm not going to take too long to set up the next store. I'm just have y'all do a poll and say, yo, where's the next spot? We need to create a hub where the community could come and let the new teachers get their lecture on. You feel what I'm saying? I would like to coach people and in getting into debates. That's what I want to do. I want to I want to get some up and coming cats and brothers and sisters who study in the knowledge. And I would like to give them direction. 
on how to study, how to put together PowerPoints. I like to get the youth involved in studying and doing debates amongst each other about issues that's very important to them in a community where they want to see change. And I like them to go up against the, the older people in the debate forum that may be in position of power to hear their views, but they got to come in and, and be able to give dissertations about it, if not a debate, if not a diatribe, but teach the youth how to put together some dissertations, how to put together a presentation.